Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. And praise be to the Most High God who has given us his holy word, in which we can understand his truth and learn to walk in his ways. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the Word of God. One of the questions I get asked about the most is how to discern, how to tell the difference between a deception and what is true, how to know the difference between a deceiver and someone who actually is a faithful disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I thought to answer that particular question today in a public video because many people ask me about it. Hallelujah. Let's begin today in the Gospel according to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Jesus Christ said in verse 24, and may the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteously. Jesus Christ specifically was referring to people who had issues with the Sabbath and were criticizing him and his disciples um, because of various things that they thought were violations of the law. Jesus Christ commanded here, he commanded to judge not according to appearance, but judge righteously. So, in order to discern the difference between someone who has a form of religion and someone who is a sincere disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ is very, very important. And how we do that, how we understand how to do that, of course, is to look into the Word of God and let us show, let ourselves be shown the way. Let ourselves be shown the way to do that. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. So when we want to know whether or not something is true or not, or whether or not someone is a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ or not, we have to seek God. That is the first thing that we do. And there's a couple important principles in doing that that will ensure that we will not be deceived. The first one is found in the Gospel according to Matthew. So in Matthew, Jesus said, starting and verse 1 of Matthew chapter 7, Judge not that ye be not judged. Now a lot of people take that verse out of context to, to say that a Christian can't exercise righteous judgment. But people who do that are not familiar with the scripture. And they usually do it because they're disobedient to God and they don't want you to say anything about it. Or they don't want it to be seen. They want to say, if somebody judges me, that means they're a hypocrite. But Jesus Christ commanded us to judge righteous judgment, which is not according to the appearance. And in this particular passage of the Holy Bible, in Matthew chapter 7, we can understand the first, most fundamental principle of being able to judge righteously. So again, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So he's cautioning his disciples to understand that the way we judge others will be the way that we are judged. Verse 3, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Now a mote here is, is referring to a speck of dust 
a dust moat. And a beam is referring to a huge beam of wood like a log. Verse 5, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. So the first principle of being able to judge righteously is that we must examine ourselves first. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 2. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. So we don't want to fall into the snare of thinking that we automatically know what is good and right. Because if we're trusting our heart, our heart can deceive us. We want to understand that in order to judge righteously, we have to allow God, by his word, to make us clean. And the way we do that is we seek him in his word. And there are examples of righteous men who have done this throughout the ages, and I'm going to give you a couple examples. Let's turn to Job chapter 34 and here we're going to read a reproof from a man of God named uh, Elihu, who is reproving Job um, in this portion of the scripture. So he's speaking about God here. Let's begin in verse 29. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only, that the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. So we don't want to be righteous in our own eyes, as Job was. Job was not talking about the righteousness of God after he had suffered for a while. Instead, he was saying, I don't deserve this affliction. And for that reason, he was being reproved by a man of God who came to him and said that God is righteous. God is righteous and that we who seek to walk in holiness need to guard against hypocrisy by doing this. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Hallelujah. So another example from the Holy Scripture of a righteous man is David, the king of Israel. And David, the king of Israel, stumbled sometimes in his walk. He wasn't without sin. And at one point, he uh, took another man's wife. And then when he realized that maybe that wasn't going to work out too well because she was with child, she he had her husband put in a place in battle where he would be killed and he did this on purpose and it wasn't pleasing to God. So we can read of what happened with David um, the king when the prophet came to him and let him know that what he had done was a grievous sin. Psalm 51 is a prayer that he prayed to God when he realized he had sinned. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. 
that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. So this righteous king, David the king, when he sinned, he, he went to God and he admitted it. And then he asked God to make him clean. Hallelujah. And in verse 17 of the same psalm, Psalm 51, we read, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O Lord, O God, thou wilt not despise. So part of walking in holiness is being able to recognize that we're not automatically holy, that we can make mistakes, and when we do, we want to go to God and admit these things and ask him to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's not that we go around looking at other people's sin and say, oh, I'm better than they are. We, If we see sin in another, first we examine ourselves. And if there's some wickedness in us, we ask God to forgive us for that. And then we depart from doing it. That's very important. In order not to be a hypocrite, we have to acknowledge before the living God our own mistakes. And when we do that, when we speak to people, we will not speak with pride. We will speak with humility and with grace, knowing that we ourselves have made serious mistakes from time to time. And while other people might be making serious mistakes, it doesn't mean that they can't be forgiven. So we don't come to people with a proud and haughty spirit. We will also recognize that when someone's speaking to us, that they won't speak to us with a proud and haughty spirit. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And a proud heart and haughty spirit is in the sight of God an abomination. So when we're judging righteously, we first attend to our own heart. And we recognize that anyone can stumble into sin from time to time. So we're merciful unto others, even as God is merciful unto us. And if we see in someone else that they're not merciful, their words are unkind, they're cruel, and they're exalting themselves to be holy in, in the manner that they speak, they're not being holy. They're being arrogant and proud and critical and cruel. Well, then we would see that their heart is made manifest, not just in their words, but in their tone, in their attitude, in the manner with which they are speaking. Praise be to God. So they that seek the Lord understand all things. And when we seek the Lord, the first thing we need to do is examine ourselves in order to get the beam out of our own eye, lest we be a hypocrite. Hallelujah. In order to discern what is going around uh, all around us, we must first allow God to show us what's going on in us, because the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Hallelujah. Once we have done that and we want to judge righteously, we want to understand a very simple and important part of understanding whether or not someone is sincerely serving the Lord our God or not. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12 and begin in verse 33 and read the words of Jesus Christ. He said, Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. O ye generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. 
For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. So this is the second part of judging righteously, my sisters. Once we've examined ourselves, then we listen to people's words, and their words will reveal to us what manner of person they are. Because a tree is known by its fruit. So if somebody's coming to you with some kind of religion that is different than what is written in the Holy King James Bible, which is the Word of God, if they're coming to you saying something like, oh, you don't have to obey the gospel when the Word of God says very clearly that those who do not know God and don't obey his gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, will be damned forever in the flame. If somebody comes to you and says, oh, you don't have to cover your head, your hair is your covering, then we would know that they're not speaking according to the word of God. And what's coming forth out of their mouth is something that's a deception. And they might be very nice people. So when we're trying to discern what's in someone's heart, we don't look at whether or not they work at the local homeless shelter or whether they're kind-hearted or polite we don't even look at whether or not they have a head covering on because any woman can put a head covering on. There are many women who do who don't know the Lord, such as um, Orthodox Jews, many Hindu women, many Muslim women do, Islamists do, Catholic nuns do, but they don't know the Lord. They don't know the Lord. So we're not going to look at someone and say, oh, okay. They're wearing women's clothing, and they have a veil on, so therefore they're my sister, because there are many, many people who understand certain parts of the scripture, but do not obey the word of God when it comes to salvation. And we will be able to, to determine whether or not they're a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ by whether or not they do his commandments. So do they love the word of God? Are they willing to examine themselves? Do they think that they must be right simply because they've received the Holy Spirit? Do they go around condemning people? Do they preach the gospel wearing clothing that's not modest? If they're a man, are they out preaching the gospel with a hat on and shorts? Are they someone who wants to make excuse for adultery? Are they saying, well, you know, I, the man I married, when I married him, he, he's not a Christian, so I've repented of that marriage, and now God has given me a, another husband while my husband yet lives. Someone who wants to make excuse for their sin, and, and in their mouth is something that is untrue. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth evil things. So the way, the second very important part of discerning spirits, my sisters, is listening carefully to people's words. Are they hateful? Are they angry? Are they bitter? Do, do they obey God, or do they, with their words, make excuse for sins? Do they say, judge not? Do they say that anyone who would criticize the sin that the world is currently falling deeper and deeper into is hateful? Do they say that you have to go along to get along, that it's more important that we have unity than that we have truth? Do they say that you're being mean simply because you're speaking the truth to them about what will happen to sinners? Verily I say unto you, my sisters, in order to discern the spirit that is in a man, we must first examine ourselves, and then we must listen to their words. And if we do these things, we will not be deceived. So I just want to read this to you again, so it's very clear. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. 
and verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I remain here for you if you desire to write to me. My email is always in the description box underneath the video. And may the word of God go forth today and uplift and edify many. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.